everyone, I am Vaiva Khandalwal and I welcome you all to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we will talk about one of the fascinating topics of c -sharp programming, that is c -sharp applications. But first, let me tell you that we have daily updates on multiple technologies. So if you are a tech geek looking for a latest technological advancement, then consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you never miss an update from Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Now, to understand this topic, we will be creating a scientific calculator. But before we get into the code for the scientific calculator, we should first understand what it is and why is it essential. A scientific calculator is a calculator that is designed to assist you in calculating problems in science, engineering and mathematics. It has far more buttons than a standard calculator which only allows you to perform the four basic arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. All these extra buttons enable you to work with variety of numbers and problems such as trigonometric problems, scientific numbers which can be divided by 10 to the power of 10, uh, pi problems, problems involving logarithmics, the fractional functions, and the probability function. Your scientific calculator has some special buttons that will assist you in writing your equations. For example, you have a special button for a scientific number that automatically adds multiplication by 10 to a specific exponent. The EXP button is one you are looking for. You enter your scientific number first, then press the button and enter your exponent value. You can use these buttons to calculate the number to any exponent and find the square root or cube root or any other root when working with engineering problems. You also have trigonometric buttons like sin h, sin, cos h, cos, tan h and tan. So now without any further ado, let's open Visual Studio and begin with scientific calculator code. First, let's start with the code. We have added all the necessary namespaces for this program initially. We are utilizing a system library in our project as indicated by using the system statement. This includes classes, functions such as console class and write line functions and method. Following that, we have added system.collection.generic which contains the interfaces classes that define generic groups allowing users to create strongly typed calculations with higher type safety and performance than non-generic strongly typed arrays. Then we have added system.componentModel which provides interfaces for implementing component runtime and design time behavior types that are frequently used to include system and component model. Then we have system.data. A .NET course namespace is the data namespace. All data providers use these classes. Standard classes from this namespace are data view, data view manager, data set, data table, data row, data column, and data relation. Next is the system drawing. This class contains methods for drawing to a display device. Then there is system.link. It enables link queries by providing various types of classes and methods. Following that, we have incorporated the system.txt. This contains ASCII and Unicode character encodings, abstract based classes for converting blocks of characters to and from blocks of white, a helper class for manipulating and formatting the string objects without generating intermediate string instances. Next, we have included a system.threading.tasks that provides types that simplify writing concurrent and asynchronous code. Finally, we have included system.windows.form library. Windows Form is a graphical user interface class library that comes with .NET framework and its primary goal is to provide a more straightforward interface for developing desktop, tablet or PC applications. It is also called, known as WinForms. 
then there is form 1, a partial class with a public access specifier. C Sharp has a unique feature called partial classes. It has a unique capability of implementing the functionality of a single class in multiple files, which are then combined into a single class file when the application is compiled. Finally, a partial keyword is used to create a partial class. First, we have initialized the component function in form 1 class. In Visual Studio, .NET, C Sharp, or VB.NET, the initialize component method is a method that is automatically created and managed by the Windows form designer and defines everything you see on the form. Then, we have declared four more variables. First up, output and the first number of double data types. Then we have created a choice string and a Kelsey PTR of bool data type, which is initially set to false. So for zero to nine digits, we have event name as button one click. Then there is a condition that states that if a text is equal to zero, or Kelsey PTR is false, then we clear the text box. Then we use variable button of class button. There is another condition. If a text box does not contain a decimal point, then we can text any digit other than 0 to 9 except the decimal point. Otherwise, we will add the decimal point to our text. Next, we have a backspace button, namely the button 22. Which, which we use when we had int integer variable which contains the length of the text and we decrement int by 1 and 1 removing all the text written in the text box. If no, no text is entered into the text box, the value 0 will be displayed. Next, in our scientific cal calculator, we have event name button 21 which adds the text as 0. Then we have an event for plus minus button named button 23 in which we have output variable which converted double to a string as output is declared double initially. Then if the output is equal to output multiplication to minus 1 which means if the output is positive then it will be negative and if the output is negative then it will be positive. Then we have event button 24 click where we convert the first number to string. Then we have choice assigned as an operator button. And finally, Kelsey PTR is set to true. Next, we have a button 39 click event where we have switch case for doing button operations for plus, minus, multiplication, and division. Where the first case adds the number, case 2 defines subtraction which subtracts a value, then multiplication multiplies the value and division divides the given number. Following that, we have a one click event for the off button which is used to exit the application. After that, we have a button click event for the logarithmic operation in which we use the math library to convert our op outputs to log best 10. Following that, we have button 2, 3 and 4 click events for performing sin h, cos h and tan h operations in our scientific calculator with the math library. The specified angles of hyperbolic sine, cosine and tangent are then returned. Similarly, we have event names as button 7, 8, and 9. These will perform the sine, cosine, and tangent operations. The sine, cosine, and tan of the specified angles are then returned. The button 10 has a math click event pi, and it represents the circumference to diameter ratio of a circle as specified by constant pi. The next button, 5 click event, contains the math.pow, which returns e raised to the power 
to a specified number. Then we have button 12 click, which has a math.pow of 2, which will give us the square of the given number. Following that, we have a click button 14 to reduce the given output by 1. Then we have button 13, which has the math power of 3, which gives us the cube of the given number. Following that, we use the button 15 click event to perform the modular operator which returns the remainder or signed remainder of the division after one number is divided by another called the modulus of the operation. Then we have button 17 click event. This event uses the math.log library to return the logarithmic of a given number. Following that we have button 18 click which will give us the percentile of the given output divided by the given output multiplied by 100. And the last but not the least, we have events as button 19 and 20 click, which has math.ceiling and math.flow library, where math.ceiling returns the smallest integral value that is greater than or equal to the specified number, and math.flow, which returns the most significant essential value that is less than or equal to the limited number is returned. Now that we are ready to run this code, here's our scientific calculator which includes the textbook, labels and buttons. Now let's run this code. Here's our calculator. Let's try to do some calculation. Let's add 5 with 4 equals to which is 9. Then let's take square root which is 3. Then a cube which is 27. Now let's try the off button if it will exit us out of this calculator. And yes, it does. Let's get back to our slide. And this was all for today's session. Hope you guys found it informative and helpful. If you like this session, then like, share, and subscribe. If you have any question, then you can drop them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.